good job, it's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 dream matches that were never televised. Now this should be an interesting one. If you have like some type of an amazing matchup that you would think would be pretty uh, entertaining to see on live television, and maybe it's a situation where maybe it was just like a, 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 a dark segment. You know, sometimes they have dark segments at these at these uh, these shows, or maybe it's a house house show event where they'll put on a pretty good match, but you know the only people that will really see it are those that are in attendance. It's not going to be televised, so we're gonna to check out some of these great dream matches that would never televise man appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel let's get right into this bad boy but these image gatherers have it too good grabbing images for these lists from matches that are just too easy to find what a life time to knock them down a peg with some matches that were never televised <laughs> also thank you so much for all that you do the ship does not run without you all please don't leave me i can't go back to grabbing images myself no Ollie, <laughs> no i can't go back one of the most fun things to discuss among any gathering of wrestling fanatics is dream matches that we may or may not ever get to see but some of the matches that i would most like to see have been seen seen before, but only by very select, very lucky groups of people. Sometimes the biggest and coolest matches are only shown to the people lucky enough to be in attendance at a house show or mm -hmm. at a show with a particularly special dark match. Some mm -hmm. of these matches could still happen in the future, but for now you won't find any recordings of them in the world today. I'm Tempest Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are 10 dream matches that were never televised. But before we get on with our list, make sure of course that list. you like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications to always on so that you never miss a fun list just like it, and if you, your Self want to be part of a dream match? You can be part of one right now, going one on one with parts fun known in a subscriber on a poll match. Haha, <laughs> you've already lost. You have to subscribe now. Please do it. Just what? Oh my god, please do it. Number 10, Randy Orton versus Mr. Perfect. It is worth mentioning right off the bat that a couple of the matches on this list probably were not the five star classics they could have been had both competitors been in their primes and put on a big stage. Such mm -hmm. is the case with this pairing. Randy Orton and Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig wrestled a pair of dark matches in 2002, just as Orton was around on the scene oh. and as Hennig was about to depart WWE for the final time. So matches they had probably would not have been the greatest representation of what the two could have done together under better, more impossible circumstances. Even still, I find myself sad that there's no way to go back in time to see this generational clash even for just the novelty of it. You yeah. will find it difficult to name many smoother wrestlers with more natural talent in history than Randy Orton and mm -hmm. Mr. Perfect and it is a shame that they weren't able to have more matches together, particularly later in Orton's career when Hennig would have been a perfect opponent for legend killer Randy. That's 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 actually pretty good. That he would have been the perfect person for him to be as one of those legends that he takes down. It's part of his gimmick being the legend killer. E. Orton, pun absolutely intended. Number nine, Chris Jericho versus Kenta. Kenta never quite had his mojo in WWE. Constant mm -hmm. injuries did not help matters, but his heavy striking style never translated to the more relaxed in-ring style of WWE, and thus his run ended up being largely unmemorable and a real hurdle for him to overcome when he returned to Japan after his exit in 2019. However, for as lackluster as this run was for the man you show me kenta versus chris jericho on that a card like and a, my eyebrows uh, will raise such was the situation. case when wwe did its tour of asia in the summer of 2017 with jericho taking on the creator of the go to sleep in singapore mm -hmm. and again in tokyo's ryogoku sumo hall chris jericho was gone from wwe at the time following his murder at the hands of kevin owens but jericho <laughs> was always one to enjoy wrestling in japan for wwe even when he wasn't part of the roster as was the case here this is a match i would love to see again on aew dynamite now with go kenta back on his game and Chris Jericho sleep, once again right there, operating sir. at the highest in-ring level of his career but for the time being only those lucky fans in Singapore and Japan were able to say they've seen these two stars of the respective companies properly square off. Number eight, Kurt Angle versus Owen Hart. Similar to Randy Orton and Mr. Perfect, had Kurt Angle and Owen Hart gotten to wrestle one another a year later, there is a real possibility that we mm. could have seen some proper magic between them. Their one and only meeting came before Kurt had ever debuted on WWE TV, wrestling a dark match prior to a shotgun Saturday night taping on oh, May 10th, 1999, less than two weeks before Owen's tragic death wow. at Over the Edge. It has been said by a number of people much smarter than me that had Owen been able to wrestle the wide range of new mid-card talent that arrived in WWE in 1999 and 
2000, he would have had a career resurgence, getting to wrestle names like Eddie Guerrero, mm -hmm. Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko, and maybe more than any other, Kurt Angle would have given Owen so much more to work with than he had at the time when he was forced to work with the likes of Road Dogg and Test. We'll never know just <laughs> how great Owen's matches with those men would have been, but for those in Orlando that night, they got just a little taste of what Owen and Kurt could have been together. Number seven, AJ Styles versus Gunther. Mm. Switching gears to something much more modern and incredibly recent, if you were going to put two current WWE stars together for that a fantastic definitely sounds match, you'd be hard pressed to find a better combo than AJ Styles and Gunther. That sounds this real is good. absolutely a matchup that we could see in the future once AJ returns from his ankle injury, but for now, their only matches together came on a recent WWE holiday tour in December of 2022. Both matches, taking place in Rochester, New York, and Moline, Illinois, were for Gunther's Intercontinental Championship, and both ended in a disqualification with Gunther walking out with his title. I can only imagine what the reaction in the crowd must have been yeah. when it became clear that this was the matchup they were getting. Because if it was me, I would have lost my goddamn mind that like the Maple Leafs just won the Stanley Cup. Okay, bad example because that will never happen, but this match, it definitely happened. These are two men that have built their reputations on being among the best wrestlers of their generation. And just given their sizes and styles, I can't imagine a better opponent for either man. Only those in Rochester and Moline know for sure, but this is one match I am extremely hopeful that we get to see for ourselves. Number six, Kevin Owens versus Edge. Nah, that definitely sounds like a very good main event for uh, like uh, uh, Raw or SmackDown or even a, a, a high profile match on a pay-per-view card just those two names alone i would love to see that it just had matches against a good range of current stars since his miraculous return from retirement in 2020 after facing exclusively randy orton for the first few singles matches of his return edge has faced the likes of roman reigns daniel bryan seth rollins aj styles finn balor and damian mm -hmm. priest but one man he hasn't wrestled on tv is fellow canadian kevin owens edge and ko would make fantastic opponents for one another with they would Edge's thoughtful storytelling mixing with ko's explosive offense and to date the only people who know for sure are those who were able to watch their one and only match at WWE's Madison Square Garden holiday show on December 26, 2021. The two wrestled a steel cage match wow. that I really hope we get to see before Edge hangs up his boots for good. There are still loads of wrestlers that left on the WWE fun. roster that Edge <laughs> hasn't had a chance to wrestle, but that I don't know if there's fun. anyone that I would like to see him wrestle more than Kevin Owens. In agreement. Speaking of Kevin Owens, number five, Kevin Owens versus Brock Lesnar. Can I just say that it is absolutely mad that we have had to see Brock Lesnar face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania three separate times, but never once have we been given the opportunity to watch the Beast take on the prize fighter Kevin Owens. What? If I had the book, that would have been a WrestleMania match so long ago, you have no idea. Going back to Madison Square Garden, Kevin Owens took on Brock Lesnar in March of 2017, before Brock was set to face Goldberg and KO was going to wrestle Chris Jericho at WrestleMania 33. Certainly not a dream match come true for the yeah. crowd in New York that night, as Brock squashed KO in two minutes, uh, but it damn. remains the only time to date that the two have gone one-on-one -on -one in their careers. Wow. This is another match on this list that could absolutely happen in the future as long as Brock keeps having fun being the happy-go-lucky cowboy. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely probably wouldn't have been cool to see my boy KO get squashed, but I didn't even know they even had a match with each other. So that will hunt you down and eat your carcass with his bare hands, AKA the best version of Brock Lesnar. And personally, I really hope it does. If we don't get a version of this match made available for public consumption before it's too late, I will be a very angry Tempest. Number four, probably The be Undertaker versus Randy Savage. This one is a little bit of a cheat as select clips of this match do exist and are available on WWE's YouTube channel but only if you know where to look the undertaker missed out on wrestling a bunch of the top stars of the 80s boom period debuting at the end of 1990 but one wrestler he got to mix it up with just once was macho man randy savage following the destruction of savage and miss elizabeth's SummerSlam wedding reception at the hands of jake roberts and kyle with a vile smile macho man <laughs> came out of retirement to take roberts down but never on tv did he get to go one-on-one -on -one with the undertaker holla holla it is <laughs> mad to think about considering this is a main event of wrestlemania worthy match mm -hmm. but the macho man and the dead man's only ever singles match came in a dark match at a prime time wrestling taping in 1991. This match seemingly could end up in WWE's hidden gem section of the WWE Network and thus could be disqualified from this list, but for now, this remains a lost clash between two of the biggest WWE stars ever. Number three, Chris Jericho versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Just
Just as Chris mm. Jericho made sure to have a big, never-before-seen match in Japan in 2017 with Kenta, so too did he have a match in Japan in 2016, this time with the massively over Japanese superstar making his mark in NXT, Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura had just come off a year where he was many people's wrestler of the year in 2015, leaving New Japan for WWE after Wrestle Kingdom 10, and his homecoming match was against Chris Jericho, a match that would have seen utterly impossible just one year earlier. Jericho has been extremely complimentary of this match with Nakamura, telling Vince McMahon Damn. afterwards that he needed to call up Nakamura to the main wow. roster. At one point, a WrestleMania 33 match with Nakamura was floating by Chris Jericho before plans changed to Kevin Owens, but that would have given the rest of the world the chance for Jericho to face Nakamura on a massive stage. Right now, it seems unlikely that we will ever Damn, get to see this match for ourselves. that's crazy that even Jericho, you know, was like, put in the word, like, hey, man, we need to get him over here. And ultimately, he did get over here, you know, come over to the States, did his thing as NXT. He ended up winning a Royal Rumble. Um, he had a match at uh, WrestleMania. He was one of the, uh, you know, main events. He didn't main event the show. The match kind of fell flat. You know, I guess the expectations was just, you know, kind of really, really high between AJ Styles. I think it was AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura at that year's WrestleMania. The expectations was very, very high. And that WrestleMania was like fucking 10 hours long. It was ridiculous. So people were kind of burnt out. But nevertheless, hey, he he did at, you know, at some point, <laughs> you know, he was high on Vince McMahon's priority list, which is surprising to say. Number two, The Undertaker versus Eddie Guerrero. There were way too many dream Damn. matches left for Eddie Guerrero to have when he tragically passed away in November of 2005. He was famously penciled in to face Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 22, but Ooh. another dream match that we never got to see was the clash between Latino Heat and the Witch King of Ang Mark Calloway. Prior to The Undertaker's SummerSlam 2005 encounter with Randy Orton, he had his one and only match with Eddie Guerrero on a SmackDown house show on August 1st. Considering Eddie was going through the messiest custody battle in human history over his son who is destined for prison for kitchen come is no surprise that he took the fall in this match. This is another of the sadder entries on this list because there's no doubt that Eddie and Taker could have produced magic together in the ring and for not sure. the kind of spooky bollocks magic that The Undertaker that made his name good. on. This could have been one of the best matches The Undertaker ever had at WrestleMania, but instead it was a special treat for the people of Poughkeepsie, New York. Of all places, That's my lord, crazy. just goes to show the biggest matches can really happen at any house show. And number one, Kenny Omega versus AJ wow. Styles. There are a few times where a fate had only swung the other way that we would have been given the chance to see this clash of former Bullet Club leaders. Kenny Damn. Omega famously turned on AJ Styles, kicking him out of Bullet Club in 2016. But before they could have a match to pay off that angle, AJ was on his way through the curtain to stand toe to toe with Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. Then when the elite seemed to be leaving New Japan in late 2018, it seemed as if there was a legit possibility the group could have made the jump to WWE where Styles and Omega would have been a natural WrestleMania match, but mm -hmm. neither of those things happened. Instead, the only meeting between the two came at a local indie show in Winnipeg on September 21st, 2006. Only Damn. the people at the Lid Night Club know just how special this match was, but Kenny has gone on to say that it was this match that convinced him to keep being a wrestler following a disheartening stint in WWE developmental, so safe to say it was good enough to lift his spirits. This wow. is another match that doesn't look likely to happen unless WWE and AEW ever want to kick down their iron bolted forbidden door. And that's our- Yeah, nah. Uh, there that's not happening <laughs> I, can, I can tell you this now that uh yeah that's not happening bro that 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 door will forever well i don't want to say forever but that door is going to remain closed for quite some time but nah it this is this is why it is pretty cool for those who are able to go to these house shows because you may get to see something that you know you weren't expecting to see or that many others won't be able to see because it's not going to be televised and i think that's what they try to do with the house shows is to try to get people to come check these out because you know it's not it's not what you you know would automatically assume you may see matchups and people face each other that you wouldn't see on television because i think the house shows are more of the non-canon type situations though they they may continue storylines here and there but i think they they kind of consider those as just those special intimate moments with fans that you know not everybody else gets to see so comment down below let me know have any of you guys been to like uh any wwe house shows and if you have what was your favorite match at those particular house shows that you know you felt like was special and you you know felt like you was glad that you were able to see live but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 150k and i'm still your undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world and your intercoast world heavyweight champion
appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.